Hello, everyone, and welcome to Consumer Behavior. Uh, I am Professor Jeff Radigari. I'll be your instructor for this course. Uh, looking through the class roster, I know some of you already, some of you very well, a lot of you I don't know. Um, so welcome. Uh, in this course, you will be learning a lot about how consumers think, feel, and act. Uh, you'll learn a lot about psychology. So if you've taken Psych 101, a lot of this stuff may be a little bit of a repeat, but it's going to be applied in a marketing context. Okay, um, all this information that you'll learn in this course is very important because if you go to work for a firm that is in consumer markets, um, all this information, the more you know about consumers, uh, the better able you will be to create value by uh, providing products they like and delivering products when and where they want to buy them at prices they're willing to pay. So it really is a huge part of the marketing process. It's uh, you know embedded in marketing research uh, as well. So in this very brief video, I'm just going to go over the course space and uh, tell you kind of uh, where to find things and what's expected of you and, and all that good stuff. So let's just begin. If you click on the home link here, you will get to this page. And the only thing on here at the moment before the term has started is the syllabus. And so all you do is you click on this, it brings you to another page and you gotta click again. And then what it does is it opens up the syllabus in a Google Doc. You feel free if you're a paper person to download this, uh, print it out and put it in a folder. Maybe you want to just save the PDF um, in some other place. You may certainly do that. Uh, something else that sometimes is, is useful is a lot of times documents like this, I will bookmark them and like put them in a, a bookmarked photo folder so I can easily get back to them. So all you would do is click this and then once you did that, it will bring up, uh, you know, bookmarks option box. And you will just basically tell it which folder you want to put it in. You can create a new folder. And then I like to drag my most commonly used folders onto the toolbar. So if you look here, you will see I have quick access to that. So just, just an idea, something that you might might think about doing. Uh, but you certainly don't have to. Okay. Um, all right. Here's the syllabus. Let's go through it real quickly. Not much um, in terms of surprise here. It's an online course. Um, here are my uh, contact details. My office is in CFO 401. So if you're ever on campus and you want to talk to me, this is the place to go. Uh, there's my office phone number. Uh, I only answer it during office hours, which are Monday, Wednesday, 11 to 12.45. So um, don't call me unless you, yeah, it's during office hours or, or, you, or you don't expect an immediate call back. Okay, the easiest thing to do is just to email me. Here's my email address. Um, I try to respond as soon as I can, but generally that's 24 to 48 hours. So don't um, don't email me late at night expecting me to uh, respond to your email in two minutes. It's just not going to happen. Okay, um, here's my grad assistant's email address. Her name is Rasha. She will be grading uh, all of your assignments. So if you have questions about grading, ask her. Don't ask me because I'm just going to refer you to her. Okay. Um, textbook for this course is called CB8. You may see it listed as just CB, uh, but it's the eighth edition of the Babbitt and Harris book. Here's your ISBN. It's available in the school bookstore. You can also buy it on Amazon or other places. Um, go shop around, find the, the best price for you. I have no problem with e-copies. I have no problem with you renting a book or renting an e-copy. That's totally up to you. Uh, the bookstore copy comes with CourseMate access, which is kind of the publisher companion site. Uh, but just know that you do not need the CourseMate information. We're not going to use that. It's not a part of the course. There's plenty to do without that. So don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, you also need this course pack here. Uh, so all you'll do is basically uh, click on this. It'll take you to uh, the University of Western Ontario's Ivy School of Business, and there you will download a packet of cases that you will be uh, going through and turning in uh, various, at various times throughout the course. If you've taken promotion strategy from me before, uh, we also use courses from the same exact place. So 
uh, you should be familiar with the process. Okay, those of you that have never uh, purchased cases from them, just know that you have to set up an account and then you can go in and, and purchase everything. So not that difficult, but probably a little bit more cumbersome than just uh, going in, collecting the, you know, clicking on the, the course pack and paying. You have to set up an account. It's a little, it's a little weird. Okay. All right, this section of the syllabus is things we're supposed to put. If you've got a documented disability um, registered through the DSS office, you will get um, special consideration, but just know that it has to be officially documented and registered within uh, DSS. If not, you, you don't get any special treatment. So start with them um, if you have some sort of accommodation that needs to be addressed. Okay, and once it is, I'm happy to I'm happy to, um, to assist and um, be supportive. Academ academic integrity, we're required to put this in our syllabus to just basically be boiled down to don't cheat. You know, cheating can be on exams, it can be plagiarism, there can be lots of different things. Okay, here's how you're gonna be graded. We have four exams over the course of the term. Each one of them is going to be 10 open-ended questions, kind of short answer essay, and they will cover um, chapter material as well as the cases, as well as the discussion boards, okay? So um, 10 questions on each exam, each worth 10 points. Pretty easy to do the math there, okay? Uh, so you'll need to need to study ahead and uh, make sure that you are, are read up on the chapters before taking those. Okay, you have discussion boards Do each week. So 15 of those, five points each, 75. There's just one topic each week. It covers kind of a major concept from the chapter. So you'll need to make sure that you answer those completely. And each one of them has a bit of a instruction about what you're at, what I'm asking for. Some of them you're required to embed pictures into the post. Others you're not. Uh, most of them have a 500 word minimum requirement. Okay. What I do not require is that you respond to other people's posts. I know lots of uh, professors do that in order to stimulate interaction, but I'm not doing that. It's just a waste of time, to be honest. Okay. Uh, case write-ups. I mentioned the cases. There are four cases that you'll do. Um, we will drop one of them. Okay. So if you just choose not to do one, that's totally fine. Or if you do one and you tank, um, then... Uh, you can uh, basically have that grade wiped out by doing better on the other three. Okay, um, so that's that's how the course is laid out. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, um, let's see. Brief description of all the different uh, activities. Oh, group project I didn't mention. Uh, the group project is out of 150 points. You'll be writing a promote. I'm sorry, not a promotional plan. You'll be writing a consumer behavior paper. Uh, and also putting together a presentation. We'll talk about this more uh, as we get into uh, the semester. Uh, but basically, you're going to follow a framework that's in the uh, appendix. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, you're going to write a paper, and then you're going to create a presentation that summarizes that paper that you will up upload to YouTube, and you'll send me the link. Okay? So pretty straightforward there. Uh, there is a peer evaluation that everyone is required to do. So you'll need to make sure that you uh, uh, get that in. And I will warn you right up front that peer evaluations, if you're not a good teammate, will really hurt you. You can lose a letter grade, maybe more. So I've had students that, you know, they, they lost a full letter grade at least because uh, they didn't do their portions of assignments on time. They didn't show up for meetings. They weren't constructive in those meetings. You know, they didn't. Uh, add a lot to the project. And so um, we can say that your grade to some degree is in your teammates' hands, but let's be honest, they're not going to give you a bad evaluation if you're uh, not a bad teammate. Okay, so just from the beginning, make sure that you are um, on top of things, that you communicate, that you show up for meetings and you show up on time for those meetings that you show up pre prepared with things to contribute, because if you don't, um, that causes lots of problems for the group, causes more work for everyone else, and it's just a big mess, and you're gonna start throwing around excuses and things, and it's just gonna be a mess. So just from the beginning, be productive, be a good 
participating member of your group and you shouldn't have any particular problem. If you have to miss an assignment, I'm sorry, if you have to miss a meeting or you have to be a little late on your section, be upfront, be honest, explain what's going on. Maybe if you drop the ball in one place, maybe you can ask to do a little bit extra in another place to kind of make up for that. Okay, so just because you start off on the wrong foot doesn't mean you can't make amends and end up on the right foot. Okay, all right, so um, that'll be it addressed more later on. Okay, attendance policy, obviously not applicable to an online course. I'm just required to put that in the syllabus. All right, communication with me, email, like I said, is the best way. Uh, if it's grade related, ask the, uh, the TA, Russia. Okay, um, again, email is not a place for you to get immediate responses, so don't treat it that way. Uh, I'm not going to answer my email after uh, business hours much, so it's in your um, best interest to start assignments early, start everything early. Um, don't wait till the due date in order to start working on things because if you have a urgent matter that needs to be addressed and it's after hours, it's going to just um, you know, be be a problem for you. So if you start early, pretty much every assignment you've got all week to do. You know, start early. That way we can address questions and give you plenty of time to finish the assignment. Okay. All right. Technology troubleshooting. Um, if you've got problems with Canvas, problems with your TW email, email the service desk. Uh, you can uh, use their little instant messenger. You can give them a phone call. I am not versed in technology, so I cannot help you. So go with them. They, they tend to be a pretty responsive and very good at what they do. So go with them. At the end of the semester, when you're working on your, uh, your YouTube assignments, if you have problems with YouTube, contact them, not me. Again, I have no idea what, um, uh, how to do things there. Okay, incomplete. If something happens and you can't finish the course, uh, there is a possibility to get it incomplete. As long as you have passing grades and two-thirds of all assignments and a valid excuse, we can set up an incomplete for you, okay? Um, and that will just give you extra time to complete the assignments that uh, you hadn't already completed, okay? But you can't just, you know, a third of the way through the course, having missed a bunch of assignments, say, well, no. I think I'm going to take an incomplete. It doesn't work that way. Okay, You can't take advantage of the, of the situation here. So um, if, you've, if you've submitted passing grades and two-thirds of assigned work and then a problem comes out, we can work with We can uh, figure something out. Okay? Um, all right. Tips for success. If you've taken classes from me, you've probably seen this before. Be prepared. Take initiative. Don't wait till the last minute. Turn things in on time. I'm going to have a late, a late penalty, 25% per day. There's no exception to that, and no matter what the reason. Um, you know, you've got a death in the family. I apologize. You know, work is, is getting you down. I apologize. You've got some other problems. I apologize. But that's why the, the, the daily penalty is there, to give you the opportunity to get some sort of credit. Okay? Um, so anyways, I don't accept any, any excuses, uh, for late work at all. You just turn them in if, if, if there's credit left to be had and you just kind of deal with it and try to hope that you can um, kind of turn things in on time, uh, beforehand, you know, going forward. Okay. Um, don't wait till the last minute to do things and not, not just every week, but for the course, do the course of the semester. Yeah. The group project is pretty lengthy. If you guys wait till the last week of April, the first week of May, it's going to be a problem. Okay. Um, take a sincere interest. You know, this is something that that helps greatly is find something about the material that interests you. You know, think about why we study consumer behavior. You know, assuming you're a marketing major, you know, this information is very important to you. So, so take some interest in it. Okay. If you you want to go through um, some other examples and some supplemental reading and some discussions, let me know. I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Um, all right. Turn the correct assignment. The correct assignment. You can't turn an assignment 
that's the wrong assignment and then resubmit it after the due date and expect to get full credit. You will be subject to that particular late penalty. That's no excuse. Okay. Um, last one. This generally is more relevant within my face to face classes, but this also applies for uh, online classes. As you read through the chapters, take notes. And I know you're probably sitting there saying, well, no, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but it will greatly help you. You know, there's, you know, questions on the exams can come from any material within the chapters that it covers. And, you know, we don't discuss every single concept in the cases or in the discussion boards. So there's just no way uh, for that to be done. So if you read through the chapters and take notes, that way you have something to study before you take the exams, you'll be in a much better uh, position of readiness. Okay. All right, here's a schedule. Pretty simple. Everything is due on Sundays except for the very last week. Uh, DB is discussion boards. Here's where the, when the cases are due. This, these are when the exams are due. Uh, the exams will be available Thursday through Sunday. Okay. And uh, we'll talk about them in detail more as we get closer to the first exam. But you'll have any time between Thursday and Sunday to take them. Um, not much to say else. There is a time limit. Uh, on them, okay? Um, let's see here. The last week you have your final paper, your final presentation, and your peer evaluation due. But those are not due Sunday. They're actually due Thursday. That's officially the last day of finals week. And so I can't allow you to turn them in any later than that, okay? Um, all right. And also, I mentioned the peer evaluation already, but make sure that you turn that in because um, it is mandatory. Um, and you will get a severe deduction on your project grade if you do not turn it in, regardless of how you're evaluated by your teammates. Okay. F four cases that you have to write up. Here is how you write them up. It's just a, a pretty simple framework. What is the what is the issue basically? Do give me a SWOT analysis. What is the best thing this company does? What are three ways they can deal with? Um, or address the issue, providing me pros and cons for each, and then provide me a uh, recommendation on as, as to which one you think is the best. Okay, again, very similar to what we did in uh, uh, promotion strategy, if, if you took that from me. Group projects, I'm going to assign you guys to groups, and you basically, you're going to write a paper for a fictitious product that you make up yourself. It can be a new brand of an existing product. It can be an entirely new technology, whatever you want to be, whatever you want it to be. And then you're going to basically just, you're going to go go through and create this consumer behavior report. You know, uh, what is the product? What problem does it solve? Number two, target market. Who is this product? Who is this product for? Okay. Um, neat recognition, kind of what, uh, uh, you know, does the target market understand there is a need for this product? And if they don't, how do you um, kind of create that recognition of that need? Okay. Uh, information search, if, it just basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but just know that you're going to, um, you, you're going to kind of just write up this paper covering your fictitious product in great detail. You basically will need to use um, lots of core concepts that you uh, uh, will learn about throughout the course. So you'll want to make sure that you do that. Okay. So look down here. It talks about how many concepts from the textbook you need to apply to your product in each of the sections. Okay. Um, should be 12 point. Times New Roman, 10 pages long, double spaced, okay? It should be, you know, grammatically perfect. It should be style, stylistically perfect. APA, I do not require. Um, if you reference outside resources, uh, you um, definitely need to pr provide a reference list or reference study list at the bottom, but I don't care which format you use. And you don't need to cite the textbook every time you um, bring up a new concept. I, I'm, I'm familiar with the concepts. Okay. Um, okay. 
Something else about the paper I need to mention is it's very common for student groups when they write a paper that they write it in one big long paragraph, which is hard to read and um, it's just not a good idea. So make sure that you have lots of paragraphs, that you have section breaks, you have section headings. So it's clear when you're moving on from one idea, one concept, one thought to the next. It will help you um, make a paper that's much more readable, especially if you're going into marketing. This is important because you're probably going to be writing things. Okay. Um, all right. Then we have the presentation. So you're going to summarize the paper, uh, put together a PowerPoint presentation, uh, talk over the PowerPoint slides, and um, submit that link. Uh, to YouTube. So uh, instructions on how to do that you will find right here. It's a video that I recorded. So I'm not going to not going to watch that right now, but just just know that's there. Okay. Um, all right. So that's the syllabus. Questions? Let me know. Oh, sorry. Jumped ahead of myself. Here's the peer evaluation. We'll talk about this later on, but just basically you're going to evaluate everyone in your group, including yourself. You're, you're going to give everyone a percentage score between 0% and 100%. Um, if you feel like someone only contributed 80% of what they should have, then those 20 points, 20 percentage points you take away from them, you can then uh, add those to other members of your group as you see fit. So uh, before you ask, yes, students, students could end up with an evaluation of greater than 100%. Okay. Um, and then basically what happens is after the semester is over, I will, I, will, I will look at everyone's peer evaluations. I will take the average rating across everyone in your group. Um, and then I will, I will multiply that percentage by your group paper score and your presentation score. Okay, so if you have 100% uh, evaluation average across your group members, then whatever you, your grades were on the paper and the presentation, the grades you get. Uh, but if you don't, participate, you don't do well, your average evaluation is an 80%. I'm going to multiply the 80% times the group paper to get a group paper adjusted grade, and then we'll do the same for the presentation. Okay, so again, makes, hopefully drives on the point you need to be a good, solid participant from time zero. Okay, all right, now, officially that's the end of the syllabus. Questions about it, let me know. Okay, um, announcements, I will post announcements every week about basically just a reminder of what's going on that particular week, uh, and so on and so on. They won't be super detailed, but they'll be just real short reminders. Okay, assignments, this is where you'll find assignments that are going on, you know, when they're due, and uh, this is where you come to submit them. Okay, so the exams, uh, exam one, two, three, four, you'll see the dates there, okay? Okay. Um, uh, the other assignments, the cases, the paper, the presentation, the evalu peer evaluation, you will submit there. Um, and then chapter discussions, uh, you will just basically just click on this, go in here. And once the questions are, are posted, you will just answer the question in you know, the best way you can. And um, that's that. Okay. Um, Let's see. There is also a link called Discussions, which will stay open, but just know that you can access Discussions through the assignments page. Grades, this is a great book. People, if you want to find out who's in the class. Um, syllabus here, this is just another version of the syllabus. It just summarizes when everything is due, and that's it. Okay. Um, the exams, if you click on quizzes, you can you can get to the to the exams, but you can also get to them through uh, the assignments page as well. OK, so pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's it's not going to be an elaborate um, course shell. You know, it's just going to get to the point and hopefully it's organized in a way where you can easily find the information. So um, so best practices, again, Early in the week, each week, read the chapter, take notes, um, and then answer your one discussion board for the week. And then obviously certain weeks you have case studies due along with discussion boards, and then some weeks there's also an exam. So um, read along, stay current, stay up on things, 
and uh, you will do well. If you don't, um, you're not going to do well because there's no way you'll be able to do well on the exams because you won't be able to look up the answers uh, to <coughs> all the exam questions since you have a, a finite amount of time. And, and related to that, most of the exam questions are going to be application questions anyway, just basically testing your your mastery of the material, your understanding of the material is not going to be recite, you know, the four components of this particular concept. It's going to be applying those four components. So given your answers, I'll be able to tell uh, if you did understand the material or not. Okay, so enough with all the crazy details and mundane, you know, nuts and bolts of the course. Just know that this is a very relevant course material will help you greatly when you get out in the real world in your marketing life and um, I enjoy the material I enjoy this this particular part of marketing and uh, I'm here to help you guys out so just as things come up let me know um, I'm certainly interested in hearing from you guys especially those of you who I don't know just email me and introduce yourself what is you know when do you graduate what is your major what do you want to do with your life things like that it's good to get to know your professor so um, I would encourage you guys to, to, to just introduce yourselves if I don't know you already. So that's all I've got. So let's have a good semester and uh, good luck with everything. And um, we'll talk soon.